so at the time of recording this video, I um, have not read Glow, uh, which is the fourth book in the Gilded, uh, I'm sorry, in the Plated Prisoner series, specifically because it has not come out on Audible, and I am waiting for it to come out on Audible, but I have not read it, thus... I have to wait till Glow comes out or is at least ready to pre-order on Audible. Um, so I don't know when that's going to be because it looks like the uh, this book, I believe, came out before. Like there's a, I'm pretty sure there's like a there's already a Kindle edition and everything that already came out. But the audiobook did not come out the same day. So, yeah, here we are. Let's talk about the plot. So this is a blind anticipates. Usually my blind anticipates are mostly for new releases. Like they're just me giving plot thoughts and reacting to the plot and giving predictions. But for now, I want to actually uh, just react to the plot of a book that I'm kind of waiting to come out and I'm hoping to have to read pretty much before the end of the year because I'm recording this in july of 2022 and you're seeing this in december so let's see um here's the summary i was nothing but a road to midas a means to get to where we wanted to go and i paved that path in gold that is like a really good quote to start with by the way just saying and she really did pave that path because she was originally a bargaining chip. Actually, this idea of a bargaining chip, I never mentioned this in the reviews, but the but in like um, the bargaining chip idea of uh, like using her to get what they want from Midas kind of reminds me of Blood and Ash when Castile was planning to use Poppy in the beginning. She in the beginning he plans to use Poppy as um, quick spoiler by the way as a way to get his brother back from the queen because she was the maiden and the queen's favorite so she, he was planning to basically use her in order to in order to get the um in order to get the queen to in order to get the queen to basically uh it was it was like a trade-off and it's similar to what they did here uh you know it, it's similar to what they did here except that um you know in blood and ash they the plot was definitely changed they decided to just do like a marriage of convenience and then they're like and then poppy just kind of forgives and is like i love you like yeah okay it was awesome though read blood and ash by the way if you're interested i did reviews i'll link the playlist if i remember below okay let's continue my life has been made up of gilded lies but death has been shaped from rot okay so i am wondering if this is this part is a reference to the fact that uh quick spoilers by the way for everything in the series at the end of gleam um she was losing Aaron was losing control of her power and she basically was ab about to lose her aura and in order to save her uh ravenger basically like put her uh like he used his power to put her in a in stasis between life and death so i'm very curious to to, to see if that's like a reference to that and also wondering will her ribbons grow back because they cut those ribbons like a phoenix cut fire caught fire I will need to rise from the ashes and learn to wield my own power. Okay, so here we do know that she, um, we find out in Gleam that she, that, you know, Midas cannot turn anything into gold. Actually, no, we find this in Guild, actually, that Midas cannot turn anything into gold. We also find out that uh, Aaron is Fae and that he was basically like, in order to like show that he had quote unquote had power, he um he was actually uh using her to turn things gold now her biggest weakness is that she cannot that her power depletes at the end of the day so she get she gets power when the sun is up like starting dawn i guess you could say like when the sun is up 
and then at dusk her power basically depletes and she was and, and in order to construct high bell into gold she did deplete herself a lot in order to make that happen um so uh and the same happened with the the new castle in fifth kingdom so that is something we learned and at the end of gleam we also learn that she does like lose her power but the gold she controls the gold and she is able to use it to do what she pretty much wants with it uh one of the things that she did which was my favorite death scene i've ever read was um she basically killed midas with his own golden crown that was beautiful i don't i don't care that was just beautiful i i i just it was good okay it was it was it was good it was good it was good um but basically yeah so that is one of the things that uh she has so this sounds like she will have to, she has to learn to use um that maybe she'll have to learn to use that power the, the the gold after sunset but also learn how to use how to properly control her power because when her when her skin uh comes in contact to certain things uh, she will turn them into gold. One of the things that she did in Gleam was accidentally turn um, Ravenger's pillow into gold. And she can't be touched during the day because you you basically risk turning into gold. She, she basically risks turning you into gold. Um, she uh, That's how she actually killed a woman by accident. And also the captain of the Red Raids in uh, Guild. She also, apparently, we don't get enough it, enough discussion on this yet. I'm assuming this will be discussed in this book. I'm actually predicting it will. Um, she, there was apparently an issue with the village when she lost, uh, when she got her powers. And it looks like she may have killed and destroyed a village um, by the things that are, that, the discussion that is being had. He's saying, because uh, Midas is like, uh, after she accidentally turned um this woman into gold and that woman be was actually her like stand-in after she actually turned her into gold midas was like we're keeping you in a cage not not just for your safety but to protect everybody else from you so i'm really curious to see what if there will be a flashback of that when she's trying to learn i feel like there's going to be some like something like something psychological related to like no i can't do this uh because of this like i feel like she's going to feel very uh hesitant to try to control her power but also very willing at the same time because of everything that happened but i think she'll hesitate a little bit because of that village uh whatever may have happened so definitely something interesting because my wings may have been clipped but i am not in a cage and i'm finally free to fly from the frozen kingdoms i've been kept in so also I'm wondering if her ribbons are going to grow back. I mentioned this a little bit uh, at the end. In order to punish her for basically not doing, basically disobeying Midas, Midas basically had guards hold her down and they and he cut her ribbons one by one, which was extremely painful. That was really hard to read. So I'm wondering, they were cut, but I'm wondering, can they grow back? Like, would they grow back? or Or does she just have to... Or does she just have to like use her power without them? Because, damn. Yet the world doesn't want to let me. Preach, sister. The world never wants to let you do anything. That's the thing when you turn against a king. Everyone else turns against you. So, I'm wondering then. Because of the way that she, that she killed Midas and all that stuff. Technically, everybody saw that Midas isn't powerful. They kind of just saw that uh, that Midas is, uh, that basically she was the powerful one and she was the one turning things into gold, which Melina hasn't found out, by the way. I don't, I don't, or, I don't, or at least I don't think she has. There's no hint that says that she, uh, that she knows about it. But I'm wondering then, uh, if, if they saw that, are they going to, like, are they gonna it seems like they might be trying to come for her try to capture her to get her to turn things into gold and basically let her be like rich or whatever 
but also is are or are they just going to be like you turned against Midas you know you weren't you weren't supposed to for this and this and this and they're just going to come to and are they just going to come to war um so yeah good thing I have a different king in my corner ah yes she's with Ravenger now so I'm curious to see how things will develop and I'm curious to see how how she how she'll feel when he brings her back to life because she's basically in life or death stasis. I also want to see the relationship between her and Digby develop. But even with the dark threat of Slade Ravenger, ah yes, his name is Slade. I just called him Ravenger. Slade Ravenger. The other monarchs are coming for me. He did mention that people would be coming for her, so I'm not surprised. I will fight for him and he will kill for me. And if we need to become the villains, then so be it. I love it. I love it. There's going to be war. Sounds great. I'm sorry. I'm too excited over that possibility. But I like my violent books, okay? That's all I can say. I love my violent books. There's nothing else I can say about that. So she will learn to fight, it seems. It seems like she will learn to fight and she will learn to control her powers. Um... So I am assuming that Slade is actually going to teach her um, a little bit of how to control her magic while and also in probably his like inner circle is going to also teach her that as well as teach, learning to teach her how to fight. So I think it'll be kind of interesting to see that develop because as because so long as I live in this world, I won't be used again yes girl oh here we have another thing please note this is an adult fantasy series with dark and elements that may be triggering including past emotional and physical uh, uh, trauma violence adult language and explicit romance read at your own discretion <laughs> i love this um, so that's kind of what I have right now. But also, I want to say, I look forward to seeing the relationship. But the one thing I um, have that I, I want to see is, um, I want to see, because this is only going to be a five book series. So it's this one, and then there's gold, which I will not talk about since I have not read Glow. But basically, uh, one of the things that comes up with this book uh, that I want to know is, there have been questions on the Fae. And I really want that exploration to be to be explored. Um, there's something I just, I want to see. Um, there, there, I want to see more exploration regarding, uh, regarding the Fae and why they left and why Seventh Kingdom is basically not a thing anymore. Uh, um... So I want to know why why that is something that is uh, that is happening. Like I want to understand kind of why uh, uh, it's like uh, and why basically that they're not there because they used to live in peace and everything. But it's obvious that Orin was in Anvil. Now the question, which is I think what you called the more than Fae. Now the question is, was Slade there? Because he knows he's Fae. But was Slade in in Anvil as well and then left? And like what like what else? There is so much. I can't wait to see what happens. But those are just my my that's my, my those are my main reactions. Let me know your thoughts on this plot in the comment section. Consider subscribing for more content. Um and okay, um yeah, consider subscribing for more content and I will see you in my next video. Also, subscribe, consider subscribing to my blog, which is in the description. I will see you in my next video, which will probably be in 2023. I don't know if I'll be releasing a vi another video in 2022. I'm actually not too sure. It will most likely be in 2023, but... um, So it depends, I guess. We'll see. Uh, I, I'm, at the time, I'm starting to figure out Sunday videos, but I guess we'll see. So anyway, I'll see you soon in my next video. Uh, until then, consume stories. Bye.